for Catholic believers. Uh, we, we revere the Holy Father as the successor of St. Peter, the vicar of Christ on earth. Uh, it's a scene, you know, at Mass we pray for the Pope every day by name, and since His Holiness Benedict resigned, you don't, you don't mention the name. And it always seems odd. So we have a Pope again, and uh, he seems very learned. Uh, uh, he's been the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. He served in the Congregation for Religious, that's the religious orders in the Church in Rome. Uh, he's a member of the Society of Jesus. There has never been a Jesuit Pope. Uh, it's, it's a historic moment. I, I've been alive for seven popes. Uh, I'm getting old. <laughs> so it's, it's another one of those uh, steps in the history of the Catholic Church. What do you hope he brings to the Catholic Church as he serves? You know, one of the titles of the pope is the servant of the servants. Uh, the, the church, uh, the Lord of the church is Jesus Christ. So I hope he leads us into greater lives of holiness, uh, greater service to our neighbor. Uh, everything Christianity is all about, uh, that he inspires us to, uh, to serve the Lord uh, with greater zeal. And uh, he does it with uh, the gifts of an Argentinian. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to bring the tango, no, <laughs> to Rome. Uh, uh, he, it's exciting. Who, who, first pope from Latin America, and a huge part of the Catholic Church is in Latin America. I'm sure in Buenos Aires there's a whole lot of dancing going on at the moment. Does this mean anything new or different for Pope Emeritus? No, I don't think so. Uh, His Holiness Benedict the Sixteenth. Uh, I was so edified. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, I, th I was so moved when he said, "I physically can't do it anymore. Uh, the world has changed. Uh, everything's instant." Uh, and uh, I think his desire to live a life of prayer and seclusion, uh, he'll be able to do. And he deserves it. He planned on retiring, I think, five or six years before John Paul II uh, died. And so uh, it, it's time for him. I only, you know, I, I saw him last year in person uh, for, and he looked very frail. And then I saw him on TV at all the different Christmas masses. Uh, and uh, he looked, he looked his years. So I'm glad he'll, I hope God gives him this time to rest and pray. And, write great books about Jesus, which he, he's written three books on the Lord, which I think will be plagiarizing most people for the next uh, thousand years. And the significance of this pope being the first non-European pope in the modern era, Western Hemisphere, how significant is that? Well, I think it's, it's enormous. Uh, the, the Catholic Church is made up of about, what is it, uh, 1.5, a billion point five members many from south of the equator. Latin America is a huge part of the family of the church. Uh, it brings, every nationality has its gifts, its traditions. Uh, when the Polish Pope was elected, somebody named Jenki was real happy. <laughs> and uh, I think, I'm sure there's a lot of rejoicing in a, in a significant part of the Catholic Church, the Latin culture with all their background, their traditions. He becomes the Bishop of Rome, and I noticed in his open comments, he, he made a big point of that, that he uh, tried to serve that city. So he has a universal role, but he's also the, the shepherd, as, as unworthy though I am, the bishop of the Diocese of Peoria, he, he is the bishop of that ancient city. And it sounded like he would take that part of his responsibilities uh, very, very uh, seriously. As we watch this process play out over the past roughly two weeks or so, what do you think will happen next? Do you think there's live coverage, we're getting texts, and tweets, and how is it different than, um, you know, you saw the Pope elected in years past, just this time around? Well, isn't, I think the tweet part has, has been post-Benedict. I don't think ever, we were all tweeting uh, it, when Benedict was elected Pope. Uh, among the reasons why I think you need someone serving in that office is uh, because of people like you. Everything is the world. It just shrinks, it seems to me, every week there's a new technology that brings us together. And uh, so it's, everything is more immediate. This is my, uh, I am getting older, seventh pope. <laughs> I've been alive for seven popes. And, and remember all of them. Uh, Pius XII was pope when I was first conscious memories. And you would see portraits of him. Every now and then there would be a, a, some event that Catholics would go. Once Pius XII spoke to all the Catholic school children, I think we knelt next to our desks when the Holy, but now you, uh, everybody travels. Uh, 
Everything's immediate. Everybody's on internet. Uh, you can priests from this diocese in Rome were calling on the internet as this process was going on this afternoon. Uh, so the world has shrunk, and there's good things about that, and there's challenging things about that. And the significance of his name, he did not pick a previous name, he picked a new name. Francis. And a lot of people talk about how you pick your name is kind of where you think you're going to go. How important is the new name? Now, there's a question upstairs we were all asking. There are many Francises who are saints. Francis of Assisi is, is well known. However, there is a famous Jesuit saint, St. Francis Xavier, a great missionary. I don't know. No one brought that up. At least uh, the phone never stopped ringing. So maybe one of the common. So we don't know which St. Fra saint Francis of Assisi is one of the most popular saints in the Catholic Church and even among other Christian denominations. But it, there are many Francises <laughs> who are saints. And uh, I'm a Holy Cross religious, so maybe between the Jesuits and Holy Cross, uh, uh, the first thing I said upstairs, I wonder if that's Francis Xavier, who was a great Jesuit saint. He, he, he was an enormous missionary. Uh, went to China, and India, and Japan. Uh, heroic missionary. I, I don't know who the Holy Father, and I, we might not know that for a while. So there's no other Pope Francis? No, no, he's Pope Francis I. And don't they usually pick the name after somebody that they kind of want to model their... Absolutely. Benedict uh, has always had a great uh, appreciation and devotion to the founder of Western monasticism, uh, St. Benedict, founded the uh, monasticism in the Western world and was really one of the fathers of Europe, you'd have to put it. So much of our institutions came from those ancient monasteries, preserved learning, uh, spread all over Europe, and Benedict has always been drawn that's why I think he's going to live his life in seclusion in his last years. And he said that. He gave the reasons why he chose Benedict. Now, I am waiting to hear what the Holy Father is going to say about which St. Francis and his reasons. It will come up. Have you been glued to the TV for the last several days? Or I, yeah, I, I am very new to the Internet. Uh, I you just have to today. So I, And there's all these different sites that give you all the... Uh, clerical gossip and everything. So I, I watched uh, uh, Whispers from the Logi I looked at this morning, which is a, a, one of these places that gives you all the gossip from Rome. And, and uh, uh, so I have been following that and then watched the regular news. Uh, but mostly what was being, did you hear Pope Francis's name, <laughs> the Archbishop, anywhere in the last couple of days? Although Cardinal Egan was on uh, one of the stations upstairs and he said, uh, among the Cardinals, this man was very well known. Uh, so, talk about the voting process. This was what the fifth fourth vote, fifth, fifth, fifth vote. I think so. The first ones, I was not, you know, when the black smoke comes up, that, those are trial balloons always. Uh, who, you know, they're waiting to see uh, who will be uh, elected. Uh, it sounds funny, but I, I presided the Heading Avenue Franciscan Sisters, who are important part of our Peoria and, and this diocese. I presided at their election for a new uh, Mother Superior. And elections are all kind of the same. Uh, there's some names come up and then bit by bit it becomes clear and then the election happens. I'm sure that happened. Uh, there would have been uh, uh, probably by the, by the third vote it was down to a couple names and then uh, and I, I'm a I hope no one will be surprised that I'm a Catholic believer. Uh, we, the whole church has been praying that the Holy Spirit would guide the cardinals. So for believe, for somebody like me, it's a, a moment where God has spoken through those cardinals. Anything else we're talking about? No, it'll be good to pray at Mass tomorrow for Francis, our Pope. <laughs>